This is actually an extension of the last lecture. It takes a lot from the Johnson book. Remember I told you I love the Johnson book? And students love the Johnson book? I love it because it's very informative and students love it. Why? There's pictures. It is short. So let's take a look at user goals and tools. You want to remember, as we've talked about, we have a tendency to focus on our goals. We tend not to pay that much attention to our tools. Excuse me. And when people refocus their attention on their tools, it tends to pull them away from what they're trying to accomplish. Did I have you guys pull out your smartphones yet this semester? No? Who has a smartphone? Does everyone have a smartphone? Okay, does everyone have a phone? Doesn't have to be smart. Okay, I want you to pull your phones out. <coughs> Come on, you're allowed to. I'm telling you to pull it out. Is there anyone who doesn't have their phone out yet? Either everyone has it out, you're not paying attention. All right, I want you to go and look for your best friend's phone number. And when you have your best friend's phone number, I want you to raise your hand. And just keep it up. It's good exercise. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, it looks like everyone, you all have your best friend's phone number, right? Now, what did you do to find it? You scrolled. No, you went to favorites. Recent calls. You typed it in. What was your goal? Finding your friend's number. How many of you were focused on, hmm, what features do I have to find my best friend's phone number? Let me see. Oh, look, I can type it in. Type, 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 type. Oh, wait, oh, and I can look in features. Okay, let me look in features. Oh, look at that. Look how features look. Features is very easy to get to. Look at that. Who did that? Yeah, nobody. So even you guys as users don't do that. Now, how many of you were looking at it and saying, wow, I wonder how they wrote this code? Nobody? Nobody? Not for sure. I usually get someone to, who lies and raises their hand. So as users, what were you doing? Focusing on your goal. You weren't paying attention really to the tool itself. You were saying, this is what I need to accomplish. I'm going to go in and accomplish it. And you tend to accomplish it in ways that you know you can accomplish quickly. You're not analyzing the tool. You're not thinking about the code behind it. At least not in this case. Same with regular users. To them, it's a black box. They just want it to work. And let's say you're looking for your best friend's phone number, and all of a sudden, you have an error message pop up. What happens to your attention? It shifts. It gets disrupted. Now you have to refocus your attention. Oh, what is this? Right? It takes cognitive load. It breaks your, as we'll see in a few minutes, your sent to your goal. Now, when this type of shift occurs, it's more likely that your users are going to do things like, well, forget what they're doing. Engage in errors. You kind of have to do a mental shift to get yourself focused back on what you are trying to accomplish. So what is it that we want to try to do? We want to try to develop products that essentially fade into the background, where the user is not focusing on the tool itself. They can continue to focus on what their goals are. In fact, Microsoft has a very nice, I guess, some, a very nice description of how they are trying to, dis to design products. They're trying to make technology invisible so that we don't notice it's technology. So it becomes an integral part of our life. It becomes ubiquitous, an integral part of our life. That's really what we want to try to accomplish. That makes something very usable. Now, let's talk about memory for a minute. 
right? Because ta we talk about how we want to design products that become invisible, right? They kind of fade into the background so we can focus on our tools. We actually have other tools that we use all the time to help aid our memory, right? That we just kind of seem to naturally use now that we're adults. So let's talk about some of those. So we do things to help us keep track of what we're doing. All right, if I was going to count all of you in this room, what's something I might do? I'll point. One, two, three, four, five, right? If there's less than 10 of you, I may use my fingers, right? My daughter still does that. She's five. I haven't taught her to use her toes yet, but we'll get there. Right, so that's something that, you know, naturally, I wouldn't think about, okay, I should point at people to count. I would naturally just start pointing. That is an, a, an aid. To me, it is invisible. Not because I think I don't have a finger, but because I naturally use it. I don't think of it as a tool. All right, you're reading a book. You're falling asleep. You want to remember where you left off. What do you do? Yeah, do, you, do you memorize the page number? Yes. Okay, some people say yes. <laughs> but most people use bookmarks. Right? You just stick a little bookmark in there. Easy, quick, you probably don't even notice that you're doing it. You probably do it, you're falling asleep, you just kind of stick it in there. I've done that until I started reading ebooks. Okay, arithmetic. If I ask you to multiply three numbers, are you going to just immediately do it in your head? Or are you going to try to write it down or use a calculator? It depends. 5,643 times 3,552 times 1,684. Yeah, paper time or calculator time. Now that was quick. So again, another tool that we naturally use. Things like checklists. Okay, what do I have to I'm taking five classes. What do I have to accomplish this week? Up, oh, check, check, check. Oh, I have to go to the grocery store. I want to remember to get my, my uh, Dr. Pepper and my wheat bread and my, I don't know, what, what else? What, what do you guys eat these days? Hot dogs? Almonds. Almonds. You guys are healthier than I was when I was in high school then, or excuse me, in college. Things like organizing documents, right? You'll put them in separate folders. We even naturally do that on a computer. Where it's like, okay, this is a bill, it goes into that folder. No, this is homework, goes into that folder. These are things that we naturally do. This is the type of thing we're talking about, using these aids, making it natural for us to use them. It helps us deal with things like issues with long-term and short-term memory, with how we perceive things. <clears throat> So what are some of the design implications of this? Because what I'm saying is kind of obvious, right? Another obvious bunch of information I'm giving you. Well, when we're designing things, we want to think about how we use these tools. So we want to do things such as making sure that our interactive systems indicate what users have done versus what they have not done. Now, you can indicate what they've not done. But you need to make it clear where in the process a user is. It should allow users to mark and move objects to indicate which ones they've worked on versus which ones they haven't worked on. Or some would argue, you know, even in a subprocess, which, one which ones have I partially completed? What have I completed? So you want that flexibility. You want to work in the manner that we as humans tend to work. So let's look at some examples, because it still sounds kind of obvious, right? All right, let's look up here. What can you tell me is going on up here? You're installing software. Can you tell where you are in the process? Yeah, you pretty much can. We have a number of, of, of elements here that tell us what we're doing. One on the top, it says, Software update. Now, sounds obvious. How many of you have seen a window that doesn't tell you what it is? Or it gives some name to it that you're like, what is that? You guys have seen that, right? Yes? I hope so. Actually, I hope not. But All right, we have a, a, a check mark. It tells us what we're updating. We have our progress bar. It tells us how far we are. So it provides us with a lot of information. Now, what about organizing? 
Who uses a Mac in here? Okay, actually a bunch of you do. Who uses some of the color coding to help you organize? No? I wish Windows would have that feature. I know, I wish Windows did have that feature. It makes it so much easier. So, not only do we have things in folders, you can organize them in a manner that is, can be very, very helpful. And you can customize those, by the way. <clears throat> so these are just nice little things that the developers thought of to help us. Things that a lot of people have a tendency to overlook until you see that you have it, and then you can't live without it. <laughs> <laughs>